Welcome to Hawaiian Diving Adventures from the warm and exotic waters of the Hawaiian Islands. Join us each week as we explore an undersea environment full of mystery and intrigue that has evolved for countless generations. The Hawaiian Archipelago, surrounded by the greatest body of water on our planet, the mighty Pacific Ocean. Let Captain Kimo Santos and Master Scuba Instructor Keller Laros take you on a rarely seen world filled with beautiful creatures and fascinating places. Welcome to Hawaiian Diving Adventures. Aloha from Kona and welcome to Hawaiian Diving Adventures. I'm Kimo. And I'm Keller. Our show is dedicated to bringing you a new and exciting diving adventure every week. And one of the best places to take you diving is right here in Kona. So kick back, relax, and let us take you for a Hawaiian Diving Adventure. Hawaiian Diving Adventures will be right back. Welcome back to Hawaiian Diving Adventures. Hey, thanks for sticking around. We're in the village of Kailua Kona, the final resting place of Kamehameha the Great. Our first adventure today is lava tube diving. The island of Hawaii is made up of several volcanoes and is literally riddled with lava tubes above and below the water. The Hawaiian Islands, a special place, was created by fire and inhabited by a Polynesian people who were gifted stewards of the land. They cared for their world, from the tops of the mountains, through the rainforests, into the rivers, and finally, the sea. Now let's join Kimo and Keller on today's Hawaiian diving adventure. As you know, Killer, I think one of my favorite types of dives is, has to be lava tube diving. Oh, I love lava tube diving. Yeah. Did you know that lava tubes were created when the outer crust of a fast-moving lava flow cools and hardens? When the river of hot lava inside runs dry, it leaves a hollow tube behind. I knew that. You did not. <laughs> I always like to think about what it must have been like when hot lava was running through these tubes. The long lava tube here at Red Hill is about 100 feet long. It was a dark and creepy place, but it sure was a good place to find eels. Oh, you know, there's over 80 species of moray eels, and though they have long bodies, they look like snakes, they're actually bony fishes that have evolved to get really sharp teeth and tough skin to suit their job as predators on the reef. The shy tiger moray is one of my favorite eels. I think your favorite's probably the dragon moray, isn't dragon, it? Dragon, yeah. He's really rare and hard to find. Another one is the little stout moray eel. These guys are rarely thicker than my thumb. They're kind of shy, too. Yeah, that's fine. And probably the biggest that we see commonly is the yellow margin moray. The puhipaka. These guys grow to four feet and sometimes larger. Yeah, most eels are nocturnal and seek shelter during the day. Like this yellow margin, the guardian of the long lava tube. Though he looks really fierce, the moray opens and closes his mouth to breathe and are usually harmless unless frightened or provoked. Barrel roll. I love the skylights and lava tubes. Holes in the ceiling allow beams of sunlight to shine inside. I love this tube. It's always fun diving these lava tubes, but it sure is nice to see the exit. You know me, I'm always have my eye open for a clean, empty shell. Add to my collection. Well, you got a great shell collection, Kimo, but you seem to recall this day, you didn't find a shell, did you? No. Found some nice rocks, though. You know, the long lava tube is only one of hundreds here in Kona. 
probably within 50 feet of this dive, there's at least a dozen more lava tubes. Some real big and some pretty small. You know, that was a fun dive, but I was looking forward to joining our friend Gina and diving a lava tube called Suck em Up. No sooner had we gotten in the water at Suck em Up than we found this really unique fish called an angler fish. They're called angler fish because of this little spine on their forehead that they use kind of like a fishing pole and a lure, and it attracts smaller fish right up to their mouth. Yeah. The angler fish can engulf a fish almost as large as his entire body. Really? Well, that was a big one. Well, these guys are masters of camouflage because of their porous skin. It allows algae to grow on their body. Yeah, I sometimes get algae on my body. Yikes. <laughs> You can see here his little pectoral fins look more like a foot than a fish's fin. Frogfish suck water into their mouth and squirt it out through their gills, kind of like a jet. When they swim, they kind of hop more like a frog rather than swim like a fish. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, the suck em up lava tube has really large skylights which allow lots of light to enter the tube. Its narrow exit makes water suck in and out rather forcefully as waves pass overhead. They ought to name the dive site Spin Em Out. It does suck them up and spit them yeah. out. Many crustaceans like the spiny lobster are nocturnal but are often found in lava tubes during the day. I especially like finding them during lobster season. I'll come over to your house for dinner then. It's cousin the slipper lobster lacks the spines and claws, but it's highly camouflaged. These guys are good too. And these beautiful, rare, and exotic harlequin shrimp like to live in pairs, and sometimes can be found feeding on their favorite food, the starfish. These guys are my favorite. They're really hard to find. The harlequin shrimp have sharp-edged claws that they use to slice and dice as they eat. I love the colors. This kind of crab uses his hind legs to hold a sponge on his back as camouflage. Although normally I notice a big piece of yellow sponge walking around on the bottom. This 7-Eleven crab, rarely seen during the day, gets his nickname from the spots on his back. These guys have huge claws. Yeah. Stay tuned for more Hawaiian diving adventures with Keller and Kimo. Welcome back to Hawaiian diving adventures. You know, Keller, being a boat captain and dive master, it isn't all fun and suntans. It takes a lot of hard work to be a scuba professional, but we do get to wear goofy hats like our friend Joe. But in all seriousness, we love our work because sometimes we do get very lucky and get in the water with some things that most people only see on TV or read about in books, like this young whale shark. That was a cool dive. These guys are friendly and harmless. Whale sharks are the largest fish in the world, and they grow to 40 or 50 feet in length, yet they have no teeth and eat only microscopic plankton. These are friendly and harmless. You know, whale sharks are the largest fish in the world. You know, and every dive offers a hidden surprise, like this little white-tipped reef shark. Or this green sea turtle. Diving safety is a concern to everyone in the water. To tell you a little bit more about that, here's my wife, Wendy. Aloha. As a scuba instructor, I teach my divers to make a dive plan and do a safety check before every dive. When planning a dive, we select a dive site in advance using information from local dive experts. Once we're at the site, we evaluate the water conditions before I have Keller get the gear out of the car. Today we're at our favorite shore dive at Honau Nau Bay, beside the National Historic Park at the Place of Refuge. Once we're at the site, we decide on the safest entry and exit and best course to follow. When planning, we agree on our maximum depth and time to stay within safe limits. We discuss what to do as separated and we review hand signals so we can communicate effectively underwater. Huh? 
We have questions such as, are you okay? And responses, okay or not okay. Down, up, wait or stop. We also determine what to do if an emergency arises and where to go to get help. Before entering the water, we conduct a pre-dive safety drill by first checking the buoyancy control device. Then the weight belt to make sure that it's comfortably positioned with the right-handed release. We secure dangling equipment and other releases. I turn on the air before I turn on my wife. Oh, Keller. Oh, that's to make sure that I have a good full tank. This one's good. We put on our masks and our fins and we're ready to go. This is a great place to spend the day. There's excellent snorkeling and fantastic diving. With the easiest entry and exit of any shore dive on the Kona Coast. Remember to plan your dive and do a safety check before starting your dive adventure. Living in Kona, we get to dive lava tubes almost every day. And being a part Hawaiian, I wanted to learn more about lava tubes and their place in the Hawaiian culture. Our friend Gordon Leslie took us to a visit to some historic lava tubes, where our ancestors may have lived. Gordon, tell us a little bit about the uh, ancient um, lava tubes and caves in this area. Well, I think it's very clear that uh, during the periods our early Hawaiians established this land, um, as you can see around us, we have probably 90% of vegetation we see today is introduced plants and trees, and therefore the land was quite barren. The early Hawaiians, I believe, when they came upon these caves, the uh, lava tubes, it became a really important part of their life. And because of the intense heat of the land and the lack of shade from lack of trees, uh, they used the caves a lot for almost their everyday life. A lot of the caves was used in early times as a habitation site. Small caves were used as just shelters where they would uh, escape the heat of the day to do their arts, they carving out their hooks and things that they use uh, in everyday life. So the caves, I believe, that we know in this land here played a very important role in the early Hawaiian survival uh, on the coast here. After meeting with Gordon, I began to wonder, could there be a dry lava tube that is entered from underwater? You know, that's a good question. So we did some checking around and looked up and down the coast for where the most likely site might be. You know, I thought the most likely site would be Red Hill because of the steep terrain and number of old lava flows. All the big cliffs right along the shoreline there are perfect for a dry lava tube. We checked some new locations near many of our old familiar dive sites. Yeah, a lot of them were dead ends. And some were nothing special, but some were just awesome. And then that one that we entered, that one gave me chicken skin, boy. Well, we entered that thing and it like sucked you in, like suck them up, except it was totally black. had to be it. We ascended into a big dry lava tube. When the lights lit it up, it was a dry cave. There's a huge chamber, maybe 20 feet by 30 feet high with red lava rock all over the walls. It didn't look like anybody was living there, or I mean, didn't look like anybody had been there before. No, there's no signs of humans there. And of course, to show respect for my native ancestry, I decided to make an offering of salt and tea leaves. That was such an awesome time, man, and I, I want to go back there someday, that's for sure. Definitely. Hawaiian Diving Adventures will be right back.
This Hawaiian Diving Adventure Equipment Minute is sponsored by Princeton Tech. Whenever we dive, one of the pieces of equipment that helps make our dives more enjoyable are underwater lights. This palm-sized light is for daytime reef exploration. With a simple twist-on switch and bright halogen bulb, it helps to enhance and reveal colors of marine life. With a toggle switch, other compact multi-purpose lights can be very handy for day or night use. These lights are compact with an excellent power to weight ratio and are waterproof at depth. The aqua flare is attached to our tanks and helps us keep track of our buddy on night dives. Remember to make sure you have the proper lighting to help enhance the enjoyment of your dive. You know, Kimo, my very favorite dive is the manta ray night dive at the Kona Sur. Oh, really, Keller? Why is that? Well, it's because it gives divers and snorkelers an opportunity to see manta rays up close and personal. I heard they were formerly called devil rays because of the symphonic fins on their head that look like horns. Yeah, that's true, but now we know that manta rays are really shy and harmless animals that really enjoy diving with people. Well, as the sun sets, we depart Kailua Pier and head south to Keho Bay, where the manta rays are often seen. Earlier, we talked with Captain Jeff Leischer, owner of Jack's Diving Locker, who took me on my first manta ray night dive back in 1985. Jeff has over 10,000 scuba dives recorded in his log books. Gee, that computes to almost one year underwater, Keller. Oh, he's a dive animal. So we talked to Jeff about his first manta ray night dive. Well, as I recall, uh, back then, the manas were probably leery of people. They didn't come to us in any case. And so it was mainly hide behind a rock and watch the manas as they swam back and forth uh, real close to shore in front of the hotel. People have learned, I think, that it's best to keep our hands off the rays, don't chase them, don't try to touch them, don't try to ride on them. Just uh, be passive and then the rays are going to come to us. And that's what's been happening lately. It's always nice to get close to big animals, especially big, harmless animals. And uh, this is a great opportunity for that. It's also a great photo opportunity. Gosh, Keller, every time I do this dive at the Kona Surf, I still get excited. You know, Kimo, since 1991, I've been identifying manta rays by their size, their sex, and any scars that they have on their body. But because injuries heal and manta rays grow up, the best identification is using the spots on their chest right between their gills. Like this one right here. Oh, yeah. Every manta ray here at the Kona Surf has a unique spot pattern all his own. It's kind of like their fingerprint. Exactly. And though many of them may look a lot alike, they're all unique. Some manta rays like this one have a big scar or deformity, like a damaged cephalic fin, like righty. Ouch. Yeah, she's e easy to identify. So far, I've been able to identify over 20 different animals. Some of them have been in the Kona area for more than 10 years. Dive light sure did attract lots of microscopic plankton. That's manta ray's favorite food. These little tiny creatures. They can fill up on all that. Well, when you're a giant manta ray, you got to eat lots and lots of plankton. Sometimes they do somersaults like this one here. And then that makes them able to feed in a very localized area. They sure are big. This one here, we call her W. She's probably 10 feet across, and she's using her cephalic fins here, kind of like a funnel, to force water and food into her mouth. That spot panner did look like a W. Oh yeah, for sure. She's really easy to identify. She's so graceful, too. Oh yeah. A lot of these injured manta rays might have a hard time surviving in the wild, but fortunately, this dive kind of acts like a halfway house for injured manta rays. Your righty here seems to be doing fine. Oh yeah. Well you can see this video here. Back in 1992, this manta ray hook had that big cut in his wing. Now, a couple years later, he's completely healed. Wow, that's amazing. Well, 
This is the baby manta ray I named Taz. Oh yeah, I remember when we did the dive and he was only about what, four feet across when we first met him? He's gotta be over six feet now. Oh. It's so neat to see these manta rays, you know, grow up and grow healthy and grow strong. I, I get so excited about them. Definitely turn into part of our family. For sure. You know, I think there's one thing when you're in Kona that you definitely got to do, and that's this Kona manta ray night dive. Uh, it's been an outstanding experience in my life. I am so happy every time I get in the water with these guys. It's like words and pictures cannot describe Not uh, even. the feeling that you get when you're underwater with these creatures. It is excellent. with more Hawaiian diving adventures. Welcome back to Hawaiian diving adventures. We hope you had as much fun as we did. We're looking forward to seeing you on our next Hawaiian diving adventure. You did Whoa. not have a birdie. We would like to say a very special mahalo or thank you to Jeff and Terry Leischer and the staff at Jack's Diving Locker and to Breeze Hawaii 